Good morning. Had a little light rain last night and the grounds are all refreshed and kind of have that nice smell. And I don't know if you feel like I do, but getting kind of tired of this COVID. <laughs> you know, I think that it um, uh, kind of wears you down and kind of, you know, I think situational depression can get you. And I find myself, you know, in, in that aspect of uh, just not liking any of this. And I walked out this morning and I smelled the air in this place and I was reminded of something that I learned and I, I, I thought I would tell you about it because I think it uh, helps me and maybe it will help you. Um, there was an architect, his name was Christopher Alexander, and he wrote a book and it was called The Timeless Way of Building. And the book really wasn't that much about building. It was about how we as humans relate to those things that we build and the things that are in our environment. And uh, he went on to explain that there are places that we go to that are right. It's nothing that we can define as to why it's right. It's just that it is what we feel here. Uh, it could be a, a architectural building that is built in a certain way that when you go in, it all just seems to fit and it, you seem to fit in with it. Um, this sense of rightness uh, is out in nature all the time. You, you find this place with the trickling stream by the lake you know, with the mountains behind you and the sun shines on your face and it is one of these places that is right. And Christopher Alexander goes on to say that these places all have a certain quality about them. He goes on to say that it's not uh, confined to spaces per se, uh, but uh, works of music, uh, symphonies, uh, works of art, sculpture, paintings, people, certain people that just seem to be right. Works of art that you just can stare at, music that you can listen to and become lost in it. So all of these things, Christopher says, are joined together by, they all exhibit a quality this quality that he cannot name. We cannot put a definition to it. Uh, he calls it the quality without name. We can describe words that kind of tell us about certain facets of the quality, but there's not a set of words or definitions that can define what that quality is, other than the fact that we know when we see it our inner self knows, and whether we consciously know it or not, our inner self responds to it. Well, Christopher had about 10 words that he went through that were pieces, facets of this quality, and uh, he used those words to give us a glimpse of how each contributes to what this quality is. Now, I'm not going through all 10 of them, but there were a couple that I think are pertinent to us. <clears throat> and the first word he says that is a facet of this quality is that being alive. Now, it's not the difference between animate and inanimate. It is the difference between living and being alive. And they are different. Uh, we all are living. We all are not necessarily alive. And in times like this, with this four-month run of COVID and this black cloud hanging over us, I think a lot of us are looking more at living rather than seeking out and trying to be alive. And this aliveness we see in music, that there are certain works of music and certain composers that 
that music is more than just notes that hit our tympanic membranes and create vibrations in our head. There is something there where you identify with the music, with the work of art, with the place in the woods, with the building that you walk into. That these places all have this aliveness, which is a step above. So, and people too, we know those people that are alive, they seem vibrant, and they seem to have this aura and you like being around them. And so all of these examples of being alive and what is alive, that is part of the facet that is in this quality. That is a word that is used, that they transcend the living and they propel us into a higher state of appreciating and and being alive and I think again with this COVID we need to remember that and we need to seek that out and uh, to make that part of our of our current existence because if we stay where we are just living it's a pretty sorry state of affairs the second word he uses to describe this quality is that it is eternal. Now, there are two ways something can be eternal. Some things, just by their size and majesty, are eternal. You know, the solar system, the mountains, the sea. <clears throat> now, these things might eventually all end, but as far as our lifespans are concerned, they are, they are eternal. They will always be here. So that's one way you could be eternal. The second way is much more subtle and much more brief. And the best way I could describe it is we have all been in the presence of some elderly person at some time. And maybe they're sitting quietly in their rocker <laughs> and they're just maybe staring into space a little bit but there is a peace on their face. There is a little bit of a glow about them. And they are in a place that is not here and now. They have stepped briefly outside of time and have become one with everything that there is. I had a time like that. I have times like that. You have times like that. Maybe we don't recognize them as such, but I think in recognizing them and understanding them a little bit, we could perhaps seek them out. I was in my garden, and it was a warm spring day that was warm but not too hot. It had just rained as it has just rained here. There was that smell of freshness and earth and there were no mosquitoes, there were no bugs. There was a faint uh, little bit of uh, the birds in the background that you could hear. And the sun came down through the trees in a dappled light. And I stood there in that place, and it's one of those things you don't know if you stood there for 10 seconds or an hour, because it's all the same because you're not there. You have stepped out of time just a little bit. And for that brief moment, you are eternal. And everything that there is, you are a part of it. And that feeling is just, well, it's difficult to describe it, but you all have had that. And that being eternal in that way uh, is part of this quality, is a, another facet of this quality that when we enter those buildings or that meadow in the mountains, or we look at that painting or listen to that music, for a brief time, we are transported out of the here and now, and we just are. And that is just 
such a wonderful feeling. So this quality is out there and we all have experienced it. And in times like this, it's, it's maybe easy to forget about it a little bit, but it's also a good time to remember it. Um, so I wanted to, to bring that to your attention. I felt that this morning with the way that the, the uh, rain had washed everything clean. And it reminded me of, of better times. And you don't have a lot of those instances where you are confronted with the quality. But when you are, if you could recognize and appreciate that, uh, you're, you're way, way ahead of everything. So, the quality's out there. Uh, the aliveness is out there. And the being part of the eternal is out there. And I encourage us all to go and find that again for us and let that help us get through these times when there is a black cloud that hangs over us. So, Think about that a little bit. Have a good day. Be safe.